One of the reasons that various commenters and the authorities tend to be anxious about the future is that things are, in a sense, getting out of control. Transcendence, the Disinformation Encyclopedia of Transhumanism and the Singularity, is a new book from writers Jay Cornell and Are You Serious? Both former editors of Futurist magazine, H Plus, and longtime chroniclers of transhumanism, which is the belief that humans should hack their bodies and minds with technology to achieve better and longer lives. Covering topics ranging from artificial intelligence to cryonics to cyborgs to sex bots, the book is a compendium of nearly every subject or term important to futurists, transhumanists, and singulitarians. Reason TV sat down with Cornell and Sirius to talk about the history and the future of technological development, the politics of futurism, and how rapid decentralization is changing the way innovation happens. If somebody came around today from 20, 30 years ago, they would see self-driving cars emerging, they would see some robotics replacing a number of uh, forms of employment and labor. They would see everything having gone digital. I mean, the entire economy and the entire world having gone into what we used to call cyberspace. And that's just a huge transformation. I mean, that, that in itself is science fictional. And the next stage is likely to be uh, bodily enhancements. Already we see people with cyborg enhancements that in some ways might be an improvement. We see 3D printing of organs. So I think we're right on that cusp where some of the science fiction-y elements of uh, transhuman vision is coming to, to be, I think. NBIC is one of the concepts that some people feel is driving forward this future. So there's a nanotechnology, uh, which in theory is the control over the molecular structure of matter. There's biotechnology, uh, which in theory is control over biology. Uh, there's information technology, which we all know and are familiar with and possibly leading towards uh, this concept of the singularity of developing uh, intelligences that are greater than our own. And there's cognitive science, which sort of overlaps with information science, uh, the enhancement of uh, our intelligence, uh, figuring out how to use our brains, perhaps how to unite our nervous systems and brains with the uh, AIs. To avoid the Skynet scenario, you know, don't put your AI in charge of nuclear weapons launch without a little human uh, circuit breaker <laughs> in the middle there. But there are scenarios in which uh, something relatively innocent uh, could, could turn bad. Personally, I'm worried that somebody is going to get their little DNA machine and uh, decide to cleanse the world of humans or whatever by producing some sort of super smallpox or super Ebola uh, in their little garage laboratory. That sort of thing is going to be hard to protect against because when the technology spreads, and so many people can get a hold of it, chances are there's going to be somebody with bad intentions. It could be that transparency is actually going to be the thing that will help us and in the sense of having lots of eyes, almost all eyes on almost everything that's being done, what we call surveillance, everybody watching everybody else. As difficult as I find this personally, the possibility that everybody will just be intimately watching everybody else by the time we're, we're producing uh, these kinds of scenarios could be, it could be a saving grace. For most of human history, people didn't really ha even have a concept of technological progress. You know, the technology of their great-grandparents was the same as theirs, and you know, history might change because kings were born and died and empires would rise and fall, but the technology didn't really change. And it was really only in the last few hundred years that people started uh, realizing that 
there could be these inventions that really mattered and that really changed the way that people did farming or whatever. By the 19th century, you had a great deal of optimism, all the, the sort of uh, Jules Verne, HG, early H.G. Wells stuff. And so in the 20th century, you had a great deal of technological progress, but a great sort of centralization of a lot of it, where at the beginning, the Wright brothers could build their airplane in their bicycle shop. And 50 years later, nobody was building a jet fighter in a, in a bicycle shop. It was just not, not possible. And a lot of people felt that trend was inevitable. And yet with the whole maker revolution, 3D printers that people can buy, there's a great decentralization of this going on. And I think that's one of the reasons that various commenters and the authorities tend to be anxious about the future, is that things are, in a sense, getting out of control. They cannot control exactly who is saying what over the internet and who is communicating with what and who is building what in their, in their garage. There's a history of transhumanism and libertarianism. The Extropians were the original transhumanist group. Uh, they had a strong libertarian uh, orientation, although there were people in the Extropian group who were liberals or leftists or Marxists. A lot of the people I interacted with were pretty centrist, actually, but they had a libertarianism of, of the body and the brain. Um, because they all believe that human beings should be allowed to enhance themselves. Uh, they should be allowed to test things uh, without the FDA interfering with it. There are even now people who we talk about in the book called grinders who are doing sort of scalpel level experiments on their own bodies, implanting magnets in their fingertips so that they can sense magnetic fields. And they're doing this with scalpels and vodka and ice cubes <laughs> and uh, um, without, without any, any permission. I think self-experimentation is pretty much out of control right now and I don't, I don't see uh, a great tendency to want to control it on the part of the state. I mean the interesting thing may be uh, when some small group of uh, hackers, biotech hackers or, or, or whatever actually come up with say a longevity uh, treatment or a formula that seems like it might be realistic. <laughs>